We all remember our first crush. Mine? Her name was Sandy. She was the most beautiful girl I had ever seen. Curly brown hair, green eyes, and a dimple on her right cheek whenever she giggled. I was nine years old, and I wanted to marry her back then. Unfortunately for me, all the boys in my class wanted to marry her too. Starting with Jad, the bully, who intimidated other kids, took their stuff and offered them to her as a sign of his endless love. To Zahi, the shyest nerd ever, who made sure to sit next to her during math classes should she need any help in her multiplication and long division exercises. I wanted her to notice me. I wanted her attention. Finally, the day came. The day I would make all the other boys envy me. It was art class, and we were assigned to draw something and present it to our moms on Mother's Day. We each had our crayons and materials ready for the job. Except for Sandy. She was upset. She wanted to draw a lily, but she only had the yellow crayon. And guess who had the color purple? Oh yes, yours truly. <laughs> this was my chance. I would give her my crayon, she would definitely fall in love with me, and she would be my wife. <laughs> but not so fast. As I was a bit hesitant on how to approach Sandy, Sammy, the spoiled brat had already beat me to it. Before I knew it, Sandy was coloring side by side with him. I hated him. I hated how he made her smile. I even hated how both their names starts with the same letter. I had missed my chance with Sandy. Throughout my 20 years, I had lost many Sandys. The first time I missed my chance was because I let out the right moment slip from my hands. All the other times, I was just waiting for another right moment. I waited too long to tell my mom I broke her vintage vase. She found out I got punished. I procrastinated in adopting a healthier lifestyle. My decisions to go ahead with the diet were, and still are, awaiting the right Monday. I was afraid. I was afraid to tell my best friend that he was messing his life up. I was afraid that he would think I was being judgmental. He wouldn't appreciate my honesty. In any case, he messed up and I lost him anyway. I waited too long to tell my granddad how much he meant to me. I continued to blame myself for that after he passed away. I hesitated to choose what university I would study in. I ended up wasting a whole academic year as a result. All of this happened to me because I kept waiting for this so-called right moment. I kept questioning myself. When is the right moment to come clean on a mistake on your part? When is the right moment to speak up even when you know someone you love would get hurt? When is the right moment to break up with your significant other? And when is the right moment to tell your parents how much you love them before it's too late? Those questions found their way to my professional life, and I found myself wondering, when is the right moment to ask for a promotion? When is the right moment to quit a job? If that incident with Sandy has taught me anything, it's that there is no fixed formula nor a structured algorithm to define or produce the right moment. There is no such thing as the right moment. It is all about you. It is about how willing you are to create the right moment and to reflect afterwards on how right that moment was. All experiences are lessons learned for the next time you attempt to create the right moment. Most of us are so concerned with finding what's right that we end up with all the wrongs. We are held back by our doubts, crippled by our fears of what if I should wait a bit more. What if I ended up making things worse? We think that we will always have more time on our hands. To those of you who can relate to this, I say we do not have all that time. And time is not on our side. It's okay to be afraid of what we can't foresee. But what's not okay is to stay put in your place when you know you're missing something and then wondering why things are the way they are. It's not okay to invest your efforts in a dead-end job and then to wonder why you're not as successful or at least as fulfilled as you want to be. 
It's certainly not okay to drag a relationship on when you know you have fallen out of love, to waste your and the, other, the other's time, and then to wonder what if you were with that other person, your heart beats at their side. And it's never okay. An absolute no, no. To assume that your loved ones know how much they mean to you. To assume that there will be a tomorrow for you or for them when you can simply say thank you and I love you. The right moment is what we make of it. Fear of the unknown is inevitable. Mistakes are unavoidable. But what we can do in the meantime is to provide ourselves with as many experiences and as many lessons learned. That's when we become more aware of how to seize whatever opportunity lies in front of us. That's when we shall never have to wait. Recently, I approached my boss at work and I told him I believe I deserve a pay raise. He has been expressionless so far, so I'm not quite sure about this right moment, but at least I have not gotten myself fired. <laughs> However, I made sure my parents know how much I appreciate them and how much they mean the word to me. And as hesitant as I was about giving this TEDx talk, it was they who cheered me up and supported me all the way through it. So, the bottom line, if you are ever confronted with a Sandy but did not have the color purple, it's okay, you don't need it. You make use of what you've got, which is what really matters. Mix the colors red and blue together and guess what color you'll get. Thank you.